evening if you're watching this in the evening uh today this video is a full moon tonight bam i wanted to see if my telescope can capture the uh this is jupiter right here if it can capture any of the uh moons that jupiter has And we are actually shooting the moon right now. I've been shooting the moon for a little bit. It took me a little bit while to set up. Now, if you have a Celestron PowerSeeker 127 EQ telescope, um, one of the things that you may definitely want to use is this uh, finger scope that, uh, that is attached to the lens to find the object that you're looking for. So I wanted to start off the night by simply uh, capturing the moon. And uh, because it's going to be a real clear, uh, real clear sky, um, it's almost a full moon tonight. So that's object number one. And then the second thing that I wanted to look at, I am told that Jupiter and Saturn, because it's so bright and stuff, that we should be able to see their specific moons and their rings. So let me go ahead and reset using my uh, Canon uh, M6 Mark II. Uh, and the reason for that is because that thing is 32 megapixels of goodness. Now, if you're wondering why, uh, the, the image looks smaller here because one, on this camera, uh, it's a, over a 2x crop, like a 2.2 crop. Whereas on here, I'm, I'm using basically essentially a full frame um, with the uh, speed booster attached to it. So here we go, folks. That is the full capture of the moon. Now, let's look for Jupiter. There we go, I found it, I found it, I found it, I found it. Okay, here we go. Time to focus this bad boy up. Bring down the 1600, this thing is still really fuzzy. Man, I still can't get this thing to be clean in terms of the image that I get. So fuzzy. I lost it. All right. Okay, let's point it at Jupiter. Let's see where we get from there. Okay, so that right there is uh, Jupiter. Right there. <laughs> okay. Hey, look at Jupiter. Um, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sharpest I can get Jupiter right now. Not very sharp. <laughs> Hold on, this thing is a little tilted. Let me straighten this guy up. Bam, now we're straight. folks so as you might notice there's an outfit change because this is a whole different day uh, I decided to change up the gear a little bit right so initially I was doing the Celestron uh, Celestron uh, Power Seeker uh, 127 EQ uh, telescope now the thing is what I'm doing here is I've got myself uh, a really sharp classic Canon 80 to 200 millimeter lens which I am going to zoom into 200 mil uh, with a, uh, uh, on top of that, what I'm going to see is whether or not it would make any uh, positive difference. Um, uh, basically with the micro four thirds, I get a two X crop, right? With that two X crop, in addition to that, I can do another 1.4 X crop into the sensor without losing any quality. And in addition to that, I can also digitally zoom an additional two or four X so I can get really, really close. Now, the reason I am switching over to my Micro Four Thirds camera uh, is because one of the things I was looking at in terms of the Power Seeker telescope is that I need to do something called collimation. And part of collimation is that I got to make sure it's basically kind of like a maintenance thing. 
for the uh, for the telescope to make sure that the light that's coming in is reflecting off of the light in the uh, inside the tube and coming into my viewfinder if it's all properly aligned. There's a little tool that I need to get, um, which uh, it, it's not going to be in stock until end of this month. But uh, in the meantime, I figured let me just go ahead and see what I can do with the gear that I have. Uh, and this is and the key thing here. The issue is getting the clearest picture possible because I couldn't really focus. My assumption is that I'll be able to <laughs> I'll be able to properly focus uh, using um, uh, using this camera setup. But uh, let's see uh, whether or not that is going to hold true. One of the things I like about the GH5 is that it tells me whether or not my horizon line is straight or not, um, as well as my uh, tilt line. Uh, so, and it's also very, very helpful uh, if you get yourself a, uh, a on-screen monitor, so that way you can see all the appropriate details. And so right now I'm going to be focusing this thing up as real tight as possible. So let's go ahead and record this. And so Cinema 4K, 24P, and let's uh, center this up on Jupiter right now, right there. Uh, now one thing that is recommended is getting yourself a heavy duty tripod. I have one, but it was uh, just a little bit of, uh, it would be a little bit more effort than I wanted to put in. <laughs> uh, to get that thing uh, mounted and ready. Okay, so here we go. So let's zoom in all the way to 200 millimeters. Uh, and, and I think I can already see the moons of Jupiter right on here. Okay, now let's go to digital zoom at 2x, right? Can we go to 4x? Oh yeah, bam. And as you notice, like the thing is drifting uh, across the uh, sky and that's as sharp as I can seemingly get it. Okay, there we go. So this is ISO 800, uh, 4x digital zoom. It's not very sharp, but it's cool to know that I can see Jupiter and its moons on my thing. Now let's see if I try to take a photo. So I bring this down. Let me turn on my Wi-Fi app. This way when you take your photos, you're not moving the camera and stuff. Remote operation, under remote control. Boom, let's get going. Let's do this. ISO right, 800, it's actually really, really dark. So let's brighten up this image. How does that look? It's a little bit better. Let's try it again. Let's go to a full second long exposure at ISO 800. Now we've got something that's super bright. Let's see, let's go to 5.6 with a shutter of two seconds and go. Now this is where one of the advantages of having a really high megapixel, high sensitivity camera. So this is like maybe 20 megapixels, which is not bad. 20 megapixels is uh, pretty good. Uh, but if you have something like say 40 megapixels, or that's double 45 megapixels, it's going to be, uh, it's going to give you a lot to work with. But this is really the best I can do, I think, at least from what I know of astrophotography and show, slow shutter speed. I don't know how to stack images yet, uh, where we take multiple images and kind of put them together. So, but having said that, what we're looking at right now is not a star. This is another celestial neighbor, closest celestial neighbor that you'll find. So that right there at the bottom, what you're seeing is, uh, <laughs> uh, this just peeked through, right? So let's move this over. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is gonna be cool. Now the moon is basically overexposed. So we're gonna fix that right now. Shutter speed, bring that back up. And then we go to digital zoom. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the moon rise. The moon is slowly and steadily rising. And uh, we could just probably just sit here and enjoy. <laughs> So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, uh, the little adventure that we had in trying to capture Jupiter and its moons. Uh, it's, a, it's a little challenging, 
Uh, what's interesting is the way that my face is lit is almost similar to the way that the moon is lit. <laughs> uh, Chrome Dome Special coming at you from Space City, Houston. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you enjoyed this episode, uh, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and share this with somebody who is interested into astrophotography or would think it's pretty neat that you can capture a moon like this even without a telescope. Right, so you, I, we did it in this video. We did it both. We did it with a telescope and without a telescope, and um, uh, and so my only thing I got to figure out is how do I capture a more clear picture of Jupiter and its moons. So my assumption is I got to collimate it. If any of you are familiar or experienced with astrophotography, uh, do let me know in the comments below or just shoot me a message, and. Uh, you know, let me know what would be the best way to capture Moon and its, uh, you know, and its, and its, in its full clarity. Or am I just simply in the wrong place, in the sense of being in the middle of Houston, uh, where there's plenty of light pollution and whatnot. Plus, you know, the Moon is out right now. So, am I doing this wrong? Please let me know. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the moon has basically almost completely risen into the frame.